It's good to feel bad. Good to feel bad. When you realize, oh my God, that's such a mess. Like, you know, maybe I should, I'm wearing this disgraceful shirt, take it off, put something else, switch that off, move these things. Every, every one of those distractions says, astaghfirullah. Eventually you'll realize that babies should do without some of that nonsense. Then finally, keep turning to Allah. Right? That is to have consciousness of Allah in your prayer, you should try to have consciousness of Allah in your life. Right? The great, two of the greatest means to having presence of heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayer are not related to the prayer directly. The first is to keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah, which is the advice of the Prophet that the teachings of Islam are so vast, tell me something you can hold fast to. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. That's the first. The second is zuhud, is renunciation. The Prophet said, Renounce worldliness and Allah will love you. What is worldliness? Dunya is not the manners of this world. So having a shawarma is not dunya. Having a copy from the Intergalactic Travel Authority or whatever it's called is not dunya. Dunya, in the negative sense, a dunya may yushriluka anillah. Dunya is not this world, it is worldliness. It's when things of this life turn you away from your higher purpose, turn you away from God, turn you away from the good, turning turn you away from seeking God's pleasure. Turn you away from doing the good for his sake. Dunya is that which distances you, distracts you, and disadvantages you in your turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are two keys to be able to have presence of heart in the prayer. Get rid of anything that anything that distracts you from Allah, leave it. And anything that shouldn't distract you from Allah, learn how to make it a means of turning to Allah. Like your work. Your work is, a, is an act of worship. Your work should be an expression of remembrance. So stir those meanings. This requires knowledge. You need to know how to pray properly. Both the form of the prayer and the spirit of the prayer. We should all make a commitment that we should know how to pray with excellence. That's a life journey. One has to have a constant, be con consistently be working at both praying outwardly with excellence and to stir the meanings of inward excellence in our prayer. It requires knowledge. We have to have action. We should strive to act on what we learn. The early Muslims used to say, they, they used to be asked, how do you learn so many hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ? Imam Waqiya, who was one of the students of Abu Hanifa, and who was one of the teachers of Imam Shafi, was asked, how do you learn so many hadiths? He said, كنا نستعين على حفظ أحاديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بالعمل بها. We seek assistance in memorizing the hadiths of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم by acting upon them. Your answer to how should you perform ruku' should be, this is how I perform ruku' Because you perform it as it should be performed. So learn and keep increasing in knowledge. But keep acting upon it. But also strive for the inward excellence in those actions. Strive for the inward excellence in those actions. So these are three, these are six matters that summarize some of the main lessons from the session tonight. So may Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who recognize that the prayer is a matter of constant turning to Allah and that you will always fall short in that turning. Which is one of the wisdoms. Why? After performing the greatest act of worship, what's the first thing we do? We seek forgiveness. We seek forgiveness. What wrong did you do? What sin did you commit? None. But you fell short of turning to Allah as He deserves. You did not fulfill the right of Allah as He deserves. You did not fulfill your duty as befits you as a servant of Allah. So you seek forgiveness three times. You seek forgiveness from falling short in fulfilling the right of Allah. You seek forgiveness from your distractedness. You seek forgiveness in your deficiency in the prayer. But you also, you say that, make that istighfar 
out of thankfulness that Allah will accept not in accordance with how you are, but in accordance with His mercy and generosity. Which is a tremendous gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is one of the keys to istighfar. That when the believer makes istighfar, you feel saddened by your shortcoming, but you feel elated by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of the adab, that when you seek forgiveness, they say, you should both be sorrowful and joyous in your seeking forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true bliss and the true joy and the true contentment of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of true remembrance. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ And establish the prayer as it should be established for my remembrance, out of my remembrance, in my remembrance, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So we will stop here with Allah ta'ala. وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد ذي القدر العظيم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا والحمد لله